Hi, Jason here with A Vapor's Journey, brought to you by Move to Vapor at Xavier Penguin Studios. we got a special review episode going for you today. Basically what had happened is I had been contacted by a guy named Rob Ross of Primitive Mods. He goes, Jason, check it out. I'm working on something. I saw some of the other reviews you've done. I'd really like for you to take a look at my device. So that's what we're going to do today. Let me introduce you to a Primitive Mod. We're going to get you some better detailed pictures here because the device that I have is uh, purple core wood and ebony, which it really makes for a gorgeous device. In the age of box mods, finding a you know distinctive wooden tube or you know metal tube, it's it's not going so well. Everybody's going boxes; they're a little easier to build. But as far as character and class, you can't beat wood. So I wanted to go over this device with you for a little bit and uh, tell you all about it and tell you what my impressions of it were. First of all, what we're dealing with is an 18650 battery format device using a 510 connection and a brass fire button. There is wire inside of here connecting the brass connectors. Uh, it's using 18 gauge solid core. And let's just go ahead and take a moment here and give it a vape. One of the things that uh, I wanted to point out is that this is my Tobe Addy. And this Tobe is actually the larger 28 millimeter to sit on top of my 26650 batteries. But you'll notice plants right on top of this guy and carries the lines really well. So let's give it a vape. Now we all know that the major components of getting a good vape are Addy build, fluid, and voltage. One of the things I was impressed with with this device is that even on a battery that really isn't rocking the best charge, I'm still getting good throughput. I'm not getting a lot of voltage drop. So whatever I have in my battery is really hitting this thing with very little impedance. Uh, we'll go over the numbers later here in a little bit, but I wanted to go ahead and do a teardown show you what, to work, uh, what we were working with here, and give you my overall thoughts. Okay, so here we go. I wanted to go ahead and do the teardown on this so you can see exactly what, what we're working with. But one of the things I wanted to point out was the excellent choice in wood. Uh, the ebony and uh, purple heart, just it looks really good together. It comes off real dark, and yet, you know, as it's polished up, as it gets some, you know, hand action, it just kind of... It just really pops, and that, that's something that I was pretty impressed with. We got our etched logo right there. One of the things that I wanted to point out, besides the very cool brass fittings, was this little guy down here on the bottom. More about him in a minute. Some people are right now going, aha! Other people are going, what? But here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to go ahead and dismantle this and do the teardown for you. Simple, unscrew the top. We've got brass fittings. We've got our positive terminal and our contact for the negative terminal, all well soldered in there, so we've got good connections. If you look at the top, you can see this little recessed key right there. That's going to be our 18-gauge solid core that's carrying up our negative terminal. Very cool stuff. 18650 battery. And just a plain, very simple device. Uh, its elegance is its simplicity. Uh, it's, there's not a lot to go wrong with this, and that's one of the things that I'm very happy with. I've seen a lot of complex devices. I've seen a lot of devices that, you know, have really funky spring mechanical switches where the spring itself is a switch, and that's just, I don't know how I feel about that. But here's the beauty part. This was the part that impressed me the most. And right now, people are going, what is that? That is our negative terminal contact. You'll also notice that this guy is threaded. So as I screw him down, or unscrew him, I am changing the contact of how that battery reaches. Why? Why is that important? Because our positive post floats. So, as we're getting devices, as we're getting atomizers that have, you know, a deeper set to them, or uh, we're getting devices where the positive terminal pushes down more, I can adjust that contact, and I'm not getting a squirrely fit for my screw-on caps. I'm not pinching the battery. I'm not causing all those problems that some of the, you know, clones that I've seen where it's, you know, one position fits all, some batteries don't fit, some batteries rattle. I don't have that problem with this. 
Our switch is a broad brass contact with an exterior spring. There is no lock on this guy, but the spring is really stiff. You're not going to get a lot of accidental pocket fire in this, simply because that spring is so stiff. Uh, this contact even will come apart. So if I need to clean or do maintenance or change out my spring, maybe I want an easier spring, maybe I want a stiffer yet spring, I can do that. Uh, that's, that's very cool. It really makes the whole thing feel uh, very customizable, very, uh, very tailored to what I want. And that's, uh, that's a big bonus when uh, dealing with somebody as picky and fussy as me. Now getting this thing back together is not the easiest trick in the book, but we're going to do it anyway. So, oop, that little screw hole. Not going quite as well as I thought. A pair of pliers or something like that. A pair of needle nose would make this job, you know, two seconds. I'm trying to do this with my big OP fat fingers, and now we've got some success. I'm going to screw my switch back together. Oops. One of these days we'll screw the switch back together. And back we go. Making bacon. And I done popped it out. That one good. Here we go. Reassembling the screw. Reassembling the screw. Switchy, switchy. Okay, so that part's done. We're going to reassemble. I am going to go ahead and take this, uh, take this contact all the way down since I'm playing, making adjustments here. Screw it back on. Everything lines up nice and flush. Pop a battery in. Actually, I think I'm going to grab a different battery here in a minute, but cap back on. And we're good to throw an Addy on and vape. So we'll go ahead and give it another vape, and I'll give you my final thoughts here in just a second. All right, guys, so one of the things that I wanted to uh, show you here, because what's very important to people who are out there doing dripping or modding, cloud chasing, is the infamous voltage drop. What's voltage drop? It's the resistance that uh, occurs between the battery and the device before it even gets to the atomizer. So I wanted to do a quick test and see what I could determine as far as voltage drop. Now, without having an oscilloscope or some really heavy gauge equipment, this was the best method that I could figure out. I'm going to do some simple math. So I'm going to take and do a test of the voltage on my 30 amp battery here. Grand total of 4.15-ish volts as it flickers. So we're going to take this little guy Drop them straight in, so as you'll see, there's no magical hanky-panky. This is live, coming at you. So, I'm going to have my lovely assistant, Jen, hold the button for me while I go ahead and make contact with the positive post and the negative post. And look what we got. 4.15. And it's still flickering. That tells me that there is nearly no voltage drop as opposed to, you know, other devices that might have a significant drop, you know, of, you know, three quarters of a tenth of a volt, whatever it is. But here you go, raw proof that this guy delivers whatever the battery has. That's awesome stuff, and I'm going to quit scraping that off. So, final thoughts in just a minute. Okay, so here's my final thoughts about this device. But before we do that, I need a vape. Let's see here. like a truck this hits uh i just i can't say enough about this it's simple it's elegant it vapes well good power throughput um uh, it mates up nicely to my larger devices i put my uh my smaller k fun clone on the top of this and walked it around vaped it all yesterday and uh it, you know, it looked really good. Of course, my clone is black, so it kind of showed off. It darkened the whole thing a little bit, so, you know, uh, I just, I really like the fit and finish. Uh, I like talking to Rob. Great guy. He's only been, uh, he's only been in the vape game himself for a short time, and the fact that he's jumped right into mod building, I think he's showing some serious promise here. Uh, his wood choices are elegant. Uh, 
as he gets better and as more of these things come out and as he you know develops his own style and his own tech I really think that uh, he's going to have some serious, serious uh, contributions to the vape community here in the St. Louis area. Uh, I really think that this adjustable uh, negative terminal post is its completely unique to anything I've seen so far. So I'm not having to take it off, re readjust, take this off, readjust, having to dismantle the whole thing to make my adjustments. That's just, that's excellent. That's killer. Uh, Beautiful, functional, simplistic, primitive mods. Look them up on Facebook, primitive mods. Uh, I do have an email address here. Pardon me, I'm going to read the card because I can't memorize things all that well. Uh, it's B-U-G, ooh, can't see, I-N-1-1-2 at gmail.com. Again, that's bugin112 at gmail.com. Uh, hit them up, talk to them. Uh, he's got all kinds of choices for wood. He's been uh, building these at a rate uh, a little better than one a day. Uh, so for a you know home builder, small uh, small shop builder, that's pretty good turnaround uh, advantage of being simplistic. So check him out. Primitive Mods definitely gets a thumbs up in my book. Uh, absolutely positive things to say about it. Enjoy. This is Jason at A Vapor's Journey at Save Your Penguin Studios. Now powered by Move to Vapor.